Known as the Water Tower of West Africa, the Futa Jalon region of Guinea is the source of many of the region's important river systems. Of these rivers, the Baffing River, the largest tributary of the Senegal River, is the namesake of the new created Mwen Baffing National Park. Beginning in 2018, the initial phase of national park creation marks its end in 2021 with the signing of the decree by the President of the Republic of Guinea, Professor Alpha Conde. Creation of the Mwen Bafin National Park is the culmination of a multi-year effort led by the Guinean Office of Parks and Reserves at the Wild Chimpanzee Foundation with funding provided through a biodiversity offset partnership. And so we created 20 years ago the Wild Chimpanzee Foundation to work on conservation issues related to chimpanzees and their habitat in West Africa, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea. So we started to work in Guinea uh, because uh, Guinean uh, Alumina Corporation, the previous owner, was uh, anticipating that there would be a need for a compensation project uh, for the negative impact they had on their concession in the region of Sangaredi. And so under their support, we started to do a survey of chimpanzees in all the sites where we knew there were chimpanzees remaining in uh, Guinea, as well as the whole region of Futajalo. And so we started this survey, we confirmed that there was a large chimpanzee population in the region that was remaining, and the best site was along the Baffing River in the Moyen Baffing. But since we knew that the habitat in the Moyen Baffing has been deforested, we think that through deforestation, the regeneration of forests in the area, through natural regeneration of habitat, through control of bushfire, uh, through activities with the farmers where they would decrease the differentiation, we would actually obtain an increase of forest cover which would allow chimpanzees to recover and at the same time allow farmers living in the park to have access to stable water access. The Futajalon region has always been an area of strong coexistence between human populations and wildlife. To preserve this cohabitation between nature and wildlife, the Ministry of Environment through the Guinean Office of Parks and Reserves and its partner, the White Chimpanzee Foundation, have initiated a process since 2017 to create the Mayim Buffing National Park. Through the 2011 and 2020 strategic phase of the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Aichi Goals, our country has voluntarily committed to convert 25% of its national territory into protected areas. You know, you can easily understand that the creation of the Moyen Bafing National Park is in line with this priority and the international commitments that our country has made with respect to other countries in the region. Covering an area of 6,767 square kilometers, the Mayan Baffin National Park provides one of the few remaining refuges for population of the critically endangered West African chimpanzee. Chimpanzee population of the park are estimated to comprise more than 5,000 individuals, making it the largest known chimpanzee population in all of West Africa. On a traversé tous les pays, toutes les forêts classées du pays pour pouvoir... We crossed the whole country, all the classified forests to promote optimal areas. So the Moyen Bafing National Park, as it is presented today, was a hotspot of large fauna species, mainly chimpanzees. And that it is why it was designated as suitable area for the creation of the protected area. Working in such a vast space requires cross-cutting interventions at several levels. Even if protecting the environment is our main objective, we work with the communities and their authorities so that we are united towards this common goal, which is the preservation of conservation values of the Moyen Bafing National Park. 
In addition to the West African chimpanzee, the Moen Baffin National Park is home to 47 different mammal species including Bourbons, Werewet Monkeys, Buffalo, Warthogs, Bush Peaks, several species of Daika, White cheeked otter, giant pangolin, hippos, lion, and panthers. Additionally, 30 hunted plant species have been identified within the park, including 90 threatened species and three newly identified species. Moreover, 203 bird species have been observed, including four species of vulture all of which are critically endangered. The park's biomonitoring program allows for wildlife monitoring and abundance estimation. The program consists of an extensive camera trap array system employing over 200 camera traps which are rotated throughout the park on an annual basis. Images captured by the cameras have allowed for the visual confirmation and documentation of all medium and large-bodied mammal species found within the park. We choose the place because it is a good place for animals that come to drink here. It is the gallery forest, so there is humidity, there are grasses and trees. Animals often come here. Sometimes the camera is attached to the fruit trees. While the identification and monitoring of endangered species is as important aspect to national park management as equally important in the protection of the habitats. To address concerns related to habitat degradation and deforestation, a technique known as natural ecological regeneration has been used to regenerate lost forest cover. In this technique of natural regeneration, all we do is protect the new shoots that come out of the shoots of trees that were cut long ago. By cleaning, by erecting the plant, by making a few cuts to allow the suckers grow rapidly. We chose the sites through satellite images. We install the plots according to these points. Each plot takes 25 by 25 meters and we label the suckers to better monitor the plants. We do the follow-up every six months. Existing and regenerating forests require protection from the ravages and wildfire to protect forest resources. A fire management program has been developed in collaboration with local communities. This fire management program relies heavily on the participation of local communities and traditional fire management techniques such as prescribed burns and the creation of fire breaks. Every year, prescribed burns are conducted and one thousand of kilometers of fire breaks are created early in the dry season to limit the destructive effects of late season in controlled wildfires. In the park, there are firewalls that have been made around the large forest to prevent the fire threat from degrading the forest on what we have estimated as values. With biomonitoring inventories, we have sites in each area of the park capable of making estimates. This is how we define high-value areas around which we establish the firewalls. Eco guards are recruited from within the communities and act in part as outreach officers and wildlife surveyors, collecting data on direct and indirect observations of wildlife presence and also noting any potential threats to wildlife and or their habitat. Our role is to monitor illegal activities in the park and identify the animals in the park. 
We are equipped with two types of tools, the cyber tracker and the GPS. It is through this cyber tracker that we have the different types of observations which we must carry out during our various activities. Whether it's a human activity, the extraction of products, the illegal exploitation of wood, we can have the vocalization of animals, make direct and indirect observations. After a day's drive to the northwest, crossing small rivers, Fields and villages through difficult terrain, we arrive in the village of Taibata. Here, in addition to wildlife conservation and forest regeneration activities, WCF provides support to community in promoting sustainable agricultural practices. Specifically, the technique exposed by the project is known as farmer-assisted natural regeneration. In the field, there is a notable presence of the project's agricultural outreach agent working in the installation of fencing to protect local farm plots from the damage caused by the livestock. WCF provides local farmers the fencing and other materials needed to protect their farm, which allows for farmers to maintain fields closer to the village, thereby reducing the deforestation of surrounding forests. Agroecological practices are in an innovation which the majority of populations have not yet understood. We demonstrate what we preach. We are setting up the fields in several villages to prove to these communities that they can trust these practices, something that can improve their production but also alleviate the problem of climate change that we face atténuer à ce problème de changement climatique auquel nous sommes en train de faire face. The project agents came to help us clear the field. They offered us fencing, materials for the fences. We are sure that with this agroecological practice, we'll have good harvests in the future. Further south, the villages of Idia and Lake Imbeli have historically been neglected, having received no external economic development support. However, with the arrival of the project, these villages are now receiving the full support needed to improve the yield of their crops, transport the crops to nearby markets, and formalize sales agreement for their produce. The inhabitants of Lake Kimbeli are grateful for the support of WCF. All the promises they made by the project agents have been fulfilled, such as the case of water bowl and the fact of having helped us to transport our crops to the large market in La Bay for sale. Every day, members of the Women's Gardening Cooperative attend to their garden plots with the technical support of the project. Vegetables grown by the cooperative, such as onion, tomatoes, and eggplant, provide a supplementary source of revenue of the women and provide for nutritious meals for their families. In an ethical system of popularization of our agricultural practices, we must go through demonstration fields and field schools. The important thing is to teach farmers the good practices of using nature as a factor of production. When they capture these practices, they are able to reproduce and popularize them everywhere in their individual plots. The production and use of biopesticides represent one of the many topics addressed during the training sessions provided by the project. As such, all the vegetable produced by the Parks Cooperative are entirely organic. The agroecology agents who came to us showed us every good practice to make our crops work well. They showed us how to cultivate onions, tomatoes, potatoes, chili peppers and other produce using animal waste such as cows, which is a good fertilizer. Among the cooperative members and project beneficiaries, Mrs. Balde, a 65-year-old woman, who is struggling to take care of her family and make ends meet. Normally, she sends her garden produce to the nearest village market to sell, which would evenly earn her approximately 200 euros for an entire season. 
we work here for a living so some of us made tomatoes over there and others did it on the other side we keep watering we would have liked to have wells inside the field but for lack of means we are compelled to draw from the backwater which is distant from us With the support of the project, Mrs. Balde's harvest this past year was far more successful, giving the success to outcomes of all the cooperative created and supported by WCF community members are hopeful that the project will continue providing this much needed support. We are very satisfied with the WCF project in IDEA. Since we are starting to see the results, we understand each other well with the agents deployed in the field. The women group are proud of the WCF project because what the agroecology agents of the project have shown us bring us good results. As we continue our trip toward the center of the park, we arrive at the village of Lafabube, which is one of the first villages to have benefited from the project activities. On the evening of our arrival, we cross paths with the theater group employed by the project as one of the many communication and outreach tools used for the delivery of important park messages. Messaging of these particular theater pieces was designed to inform and provoke reflection with respect to wildlife women, conflict and potential means to resolve these conflicts. Later, the theater performance was followed up by a film presentation. Euh, il s'agit d'une campagne de sensibilisation des communautés qui sont autour du parc. We come to educate, raise awareness and translate messages that would allow the communities harboring the park to join the WCF project to take care of the environment. It is a good message that they convey to us through this theater. So we are going to put into practice in our village to protect the environment. In Lafa Bube, as is the case in the other villages of the park, practices related to the traditional production of honey result in significant environmental damage, given that fire is used for harvesting the honey. Often, these fires then spread into the surrounding forests. To promote sustainable apiculture activities, the project has established 175 Kenyan beehives in seven villages that are more productive than traditional hives and may be reused year after year. The area has a strong potential for honey. But in a traditional way, the production of which is not enormous, with all the difficult tasks relating to it, they only obtain 5 liters per hive. But with the use of Kenyan hives, there is a high production which sometimes amount to 22 liters. So we formed these groups in the area of appropriate technology for harvesting and enhancing the products. To scale up and support further economic development of community-based honey production activities, a storage facility was constructed in Lava Bube that allows the local honey producer to store their product until market conditions are favorable. In addition to storage facilities for local produce, the project has helped local communities with the construction and repair for other essential infrastructure, including the construction of wells and other water sources, school repairs, the construction construction of livestock enclosure and the development of a 17-hectare agricultural zone in the village of Lalabara, to name a few. There are two main issues in relation to the management of the park. It is certainly conservation the priority, but there are also development issues because of the community aspect. In the second program, we try to structure the communities around conservation and development issues. It is necessary to achieve a sustainable development of these territories combined with conservation and the aspirations of the communities for their local development. We want to meet the ambitions of the communities and their needs, which is why we are working with the town halls within the framework of the local development plan and their annual investment plans. These have made a direct link with the needs of the communities. Our ambition is to link these villages' needs to the local development plan. 
Based on the belief that sustainable living and livelihood require an understanding and appreciation of the environment, ecosystems, and the services they provide, the Environmental Education Program is an important component of the project's activities. As today, children are the decision makers of tomorrow. The project has introduced the Club Han, which stands for People, Animal, Nature, into the curriculum of 10 schools throughout the park. On intervient dans ces différentes écoles, notamment en don de fourniture au début de l'année. We intervene in these different schools in particular by donating supplies at the beginning of the year. This program primarily involves training and retraining the various teachers and directors in environmental issues. One of the aspects of the Pan Club program is to inculcate environmental education through a particular pedagogy so that they can faithfully transmit the environmental aspect that one would wish to. Progress made through the education program is evaluated similar to the other project activities in order to ensure that learning objectives are being effectively achieved. Throughout the process of creating the Moen Bafing National Park, important progress has been made in terms of wildlife conservation, forest protection, community economic development, awareness raising, and capacity building. The progress made over the years has brought the communities of the park one step closer to achieving the ultimate goal, sustainable coexistence with the natural world. These achievements were made possible through the hard work and dedication of the diverse group of individuals, WCF employees and partners, whom are committed to making the project a success. Although much work remains, with the continued hard work and perseverance of this dedicated team, the Moen Baffin National Park will someday be recognized as a national treasure and appreciated internationally. <laughs>